Well, I've been playing music for over 50 years professionally, and uh, then I took a little stint in the uh, medical field and became a, well, it's called a neurospecialist, but you may know him as a brain surgeon. Anyway, <laughs> that's what I did. <laughs> and I uh, retired that way and went back into the ministry because I love singing for the Lord. I love lifting hands and praising Him and giving Him glory because He deserves that glory. And uh, that's about it. I'm old, okay? <laughs> in Jesus Christ because the only thing that's going to save this world is the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's going to hold in heaven. I've been there by the Savior. I've felt fire from above. Just look around us. 
And there it stopped. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So, is it going to work? Just look around us. Evil's breaking loose on every side. The devil knows it's time in his own story. Cause soon the clock will stop and Jesus Christ will split the sky. So shout it from the rooftops. Proclaim it in the streets. Tell your friends and neighbors. Tell everyone you need. We all need a savior, but we're running out of time. He's coming back at midnight. And it's eleven. There's only one way to heaven, and Jesus is his name. So shout it from the rooftops, proclaim it in the streets. Tell your friends and neighbors, tell everyone you meet. We all need a savior, but we're running out of time.
It doesn't mean you're losing your mind, you know. But now, let me say this. If you've uh, ever stood on a staircase and wondered if you're going up or going down, you might want to seek some help, okay? Because you might have a problem there. But anyway, in this day and age, we're so busy. We're so busy with everything. I mean, our daily lives are jam-packed. Nobody has time anymore for anything. And it's real easy for us to forget the ones that are closest to us, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Our friends, our family, our loved ones. Now, I don't know if this has ever happened to you, but this happened to me last year. A friend of mine, whom I had just spoken to the week before, went to see him on Sunday. Actually, I was, he's a pastor, and I was supposed to hold service for him. And I got there, and the deacon met me at the door and told me that the pastor passed away this morning. And it hit me like, like really hard because I thought, you know, it was just last week. We were laughing, talking on the phone, everything's cool. Now it's gone. It's tough. Those who are closest to us, those that God has given us, we need to stop from our daily rush and give them a call. Send them a text. Or go by and just say hi. And tell them that we love them. And not just tell them, but show them. Show them that we love them. How many of you have said I love you to someone here today? Have you? That's good. That's good. Because we don't know when we're going to be here. And we should live every day just as though it was our last day on earth. Because it could be. And there are things that you need to tell people. There's things you need to do. So that when you leave this earth, you can say, I've lived a full life. I've told those that I'm in love with that I love them. I've heard people say, oh, well, they know I love them. Yeah, but they still like to hear it. That's right.
Thank you. Pastor Chuck. Nacogdoches, uh, Sissy Moore, Vera Applegate, Unspoken, Virginia Plummer, John Barnett, will be having a procedure soon, they were telling me earlier, Tracy was letting me know, uh, Ron Hilker, Richard Brzezinski for strength, he's been battling some low blood pressure, and Brad Fox. Anybody else we may have missed here? I uh, need to get back in the routine of, of anybody. Let us know if you have a prayer request. And we'll be sure to jot it down. Anybody? Yes, ma'am. My friend Charlotte Gilchrist. Charlotte Gilchrist. All right. Anybody else? Got a prayer request? I don't want to leave nobody out. Ace Matthews. All right. Anybody else? Dustin and Tisha. All right, Dustin. And then Simeon and Beecham. Dustin, Tisha, and Simeon. All right. Anybody else? Thankful that God cares about our needs. All right. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we just lift up every person on this list today. They're special. The Bible says they are fearfully and wonderfully made. You created them in their mother's womb. And so, Lord, we just lift up each person, no matter what that need may be. You know exactly what it is. You still tell us that we are to ask. So we ask you, Lord, to meet every need. Of every person on this list tonight, Lord, you know exactly what they need. Those that need healing or maybe strength or comfort, whatever they're going through, many of them battling sickness and, and uh, not feeling well, we just pray for strength and healing in their bodies, Lord. We ask you to meet every need of every person here tonight. We thank you, Lord, for we can have a church family and be a part of a church that prays one for another. So we thank you for meeting these needs tonight. In Jesus' name, everybody say it. Amen. 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 What about a praise report? Anybody got a praise report? Anybody want to 
Got a shout out, a praise report they would like to share. <coughs> How's Carson doing? Doing good. That's a praise report that he's made it through a week and a half of horseshoe school and he's still doing good. <laughs> <laughs> How much DNA and blood drops as he dropped up around the Kaufman area? Yeah. When you go to horseshoe in school, you always got some nicks and, and cuts. This morning, everybody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You'll find out where your heart is with, with the Lord. I was shooing a calf horse this morning, and uh, somehow or another, man, I very seldom hit my finger. How many of you would lay your finger out on a piece of iron and just hit it with a hammer? It's not a popular <laughs> thing to do, right? <laughs> Well, I'm shooting this dead broke calf horse, and uh, he, he moved right when I was driving that nail, he moved, and when he moved, I hit myself right on the finger, and I didn't say praise the Lord, <laughs> but I didn't say anything else either, <laughs> I, boy, I knocked a fire out there, I was like, oh. And uh, Cain, and he was there, he said, Man, what you do? I said, well, just put it this way, I didn't hit the nail, amen. I didn't, I didn't hit the nail on the head, I hit my finger. Boy, hard as I could swing that little hammer, you get where you can grab that thing. And uh, But that uh, the praise report is, you know, that I didn't, I didn't, I, I knocked a hide off of it, it hurt for a minute, but it was okay. So it's a praise report that Carson is... <laughs> Is making it through horseshoe in school. I, I texted him the other day, Friday, I think. Said he was holding his own. <laughs> That's good. Anybody else have a praise report or anything? Make sure. I do. I'm, I can walk this Wednesday. Amen. Last Wednesday, I was kind of, I was kind of twisted there. <laughs> so Thursday morning, I went to work. And literally, I got down to the end of the bed and was walking like this. <laughs> I said, where are you going? I said, I'm going to work. She said, have you lost your mind? <laughs> I said, no, actually, I need to get moving. I said, actually, by lunch, I felt a lot better. So I'm, I'm very thankful for y'all's prayers. I know I've said that a lot, but I don't take it lightly. I appreciate everybody. And as a church, that's what we do. We, we help each other out. We pray for one another. Amen. Because you may not have a need today, but go ahead and make sure and find somebody that does and pray for them. Because guess what? There'll be a day that you'll need that prayer. And the Bible says we reap what we sow. We'll run through some quick announcements. Uh, the Lord has blessed us tonight with milk. <laughs> I don't know if you saw in the foyer, there's a lot of milk. Uh, Kip, tell us what happened. You got some from Harvest? Before I ask there's a, there's a lot of milk, so nobody's leaving here without at least a half gallon of milk. <laughs> so we're going to get your calcium levels up next, next week before you'll have some high calcium. So don't leave without getting some milk. It's out there in the foyer. I just got that announcement a while ago. Uh, don't forget, look through your church bulletins. I know it's Wednesday, we don't hand them out, but if you were here Sunday, uh, make sure you look up, get with your bulletin and kind of let you know what's going on. It was a blessing uh, to have those water baptisms Sunday, amen, and uh, it, it was good. So, uh, food drive, don't forget, dry beans, rice, mac and cheese, is that right, Miss Angela? Yes, sir. Everybody's doing good, I've seen people bring it in and you can drop it off in the foyer. For our food drive for Jasper Share. Don't forget the yellow communication cards. If you got a prayer request or something you need to fill out and sign up for something, please feel free to do that. Uh, new volunteers need as needed just to cook for families that might experience a loss or going through a hard time. So we're getting some people coming in on that. Uh, let's see, we're gonna hold off. We mentioned this Sunday, man. We've had a little deal with the coronavirus thing so we've slowed down on the meals that we were going to start uh, today uh, we're going to hold off on the youth just for a couple of weeks and we'll let y'all know as we go along don't forget stop by the sale bar and get a, a shirt or a hat uh, membership class will be july the 19th so we've got several new people uh man i've met several uh, about four people tonight that are new members to our church and they just started coming since you know, we've opened the church back up. It's been a challenging time for us, but I'm just glad that God is He's walking us through this. We're going to come out the other side. Amen. We just have to, it's, it's a different time that we're in. I'm thankful for technology and being able to have a live feed, but I'm glad we can still have church. Uh, 
we're 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 going to stay over Sunday. We'll probably skip a row until we get through this little deal. But we we got plenty of room, and uh, I'm 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 very thankful that we're able to be back at church. I believe this too shall pass soon. So I think that's it. But new members, we got several new members. That'll be July the 19th. We'll keep you posted on that. And I think that's it. Remember, uh, I've had some praise reports written down here from Sunday. That Miss Allison still got her swimming pool. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Big high dollar above ground pool. We let it. Somebody actually called us after church Sunday and said, hey, we got an above ground pool. It, it's used, but we'll give it to you. He said, man, we appreciate it, but we, we, we like the little, little horse talk because when the water gets dirty, we just turn it over. Amen. And if we get tired of swimming, we take it out and water the horses. They appreciate it too. So anyway, uh, I did have a couple things written down. <clears throat> Sunday, you know, my youngest daughter was able to come to church. And uh, she actually heard and, and her boyfriend and his mom, they all went to Lufkin with us and uh, my older daughter Shelby and, and Cody, everybody come over. And uh, we wrote the dummy and had fun, went fishing. Uh, my youngest daughter, she's a tomboy. She likes to fish and all kinds of stuff. So she got her a worm and went and caught some bass in the pond. So we did have a good Sunday evening and that was that was that was truly a blessing. So I think that's all of our announcements and uh, we'll crack open the word of God if you have your Bible. Let's open, uh, open it up, and we're going to kind of, I normally don't do this, uh, but I'm going to kind of piggyback off what we talked about Sunday. We're not finished with the Sunday message. We'll carry on uh, this Sunday. We're basically talking about trusting God. Amen. And actually, remember how we talked about our rest and our peace? Let's say it together. Rest and peace. And this is just like there's a gauge in our vehicle. Spiritually speaking, we need a set of gauges. We need to make sure that we're resting and trusting in the Lord and that God's peace is relevant in our lives. And we all know that through life, there's times that our peace is very, very high. Amen? How many of you like peaceful days? Anybody want to give me an illustration of what you would consider a peaceful day? There's no right or wrong answer, but... Somebody tell me what, what you would say could peaceful. A walk in the woods. Walk in the woods. Gardening. Amen. Gardening. Walk in the woods. That's a peaceful day. Anybody else? Allison, what's a peaceful day to you? Uh, I go sit outside the pond this morning with my mom. We sat out by the pond and just talked and visited. There's nowhere to be. No, nothing we had to go get up and go do in a hurry. Nice. That was peaceful. Amen. I can tell you what was a piece that hit my finger today. <laughs> I had to throw that in. <laughs> who else? I'm not, something just as peaceful to you. Everybody's a little different, but who, who would say, hey, something peaceful? Sitting on the riverbank. Hey, that's a good one. It's a country boy there said, sitting on the riverbank. Amen. Watching, watching the river flow. You know. <laughs> And peace is an awesome thing. Don't you wish every day was just perfect peace? Yes. But it's, it's not. So we have to learn that our peace doesn't come just from our surroundings, so to speak. Thank God, man. I, I enjoy going to the river. I enjoy doing all, everything everybody mentioned. The woods. I love deer hunting in the winter. I don't care if I kill one or not. I just like to get out there. And it's quiet. And see deer and animals moving around. So we all have things that we like and say, man, that, that brings me some peace. Nope. But we also know real life happens. Amen. Let's say it together. Real life happens. And there's going to be times that your peace gauge is going to kind of go down a little bit. Amen. But it's up to us, and that's really our responsibility to, to take inventory of our peace in our life and our, our rest. And what I mean by rest is thank God for a good nap or a good night's sleep. When I talk about rest, I'm pretty much talking about I want to rest in the Lord. And the way that I rest in Him is I have to fully trust Him. Amen. And so I, things can be raging. There can be storms brewing. And I can still be resting in Christ. Amen. And not in ourselves because we're human, right? But when I am walking with Christ and I feel my peace level get off a little bit, what I have to do, I have to make sure 
earth. I get my eyes back on Christ. Amen. Because He is our peace. He is our strength. And we, we the, the scripture after scripture we're going to be doing on Sundays. But I want to challenge you a little bit today. Is Just like I said Sunday. Where's my rest level? And where's my peace level? Because peace is, you know, peace sometimes is uh, subject to situations in our life. But when I have Christ as the center of my life, I got a peace. The Bible says it passes all understanding. So let's say it together. Peace that passes all understanding. So your physical mind can't even understand God's peace. Some of the most peaceful times we probably experience has been in one of the most stressful times of our life. And yet when we so stressed out and we can't fix it, what do we do? Last resort, shame to say, we cry out to God. Sometimes as a last resort. Now, the longer we walk with Him, hopefully the quicker we are to say, Lord, I need your peace. And really all He's looking at is probably thinking, you really just need to trust me because we try to figure everything out, right? right? But God wants us to have rest in Him, not just in, not in ourselves, but when we know Him, there is a peace in us that just, I mean, almost until you know Christ personally yourself, it's just hard to explain to somebody the peace that knowing the Lord gives you in your heart. We talk about this a lot. There's sometimes you can see someone and, you know, you just, I'll, I'll tell Allison, I guarantee you there, that, that the person's a Christian right there. There is just a peace about them. It doesn't mean we're perfect, amen? But it means there is a peace and a rest in our heart. So as a follower of Christ, I want to make sure that I walk in God's peace and that I rest in Him. How many of you ever seen, I've never done this, but I've heard of people do what, seminars where you fall and somebody catches you, what do you call that? Trust fall. Trust fall. How many of you ever do a trust fall in front of the whole church today? Come on up here and I'll catch you. I'm just joking. <laughs> I really would catch you. But you know, and it's, it's that way with the Lord. We have to learn even though we can't see him back there, we got to know he's got us, and we got to learn. The more we walk with him, the more we learn how to what to trust him. And it's a daily thing; it's a daily process. The more that that we walk with him, the easier we learn to to trust him. And so, my challenge is tonight. Our question is this: Are we truly trusting him? Now, I might have been trusting him yesterday, but that doesn't mean I'm going to do it today, right? It's a daily walk. It's probably actually a, a minute by minute walk with the Lord. Because things can change. How many of you ever had one unexpected phone call changed your life? I mean, it could be good, it could be bad, it could man that quick. And so our trust has to be in Him because this world is shaking. Can I get a good amen? amen. Remember back in February? Man, we were rolling along, weren't we? Can you it's hard to to process how much change we have seen since February. I would have never thought it in my lifetime. Yet, God stays the same. Yeah, we've got to make good choices. And thank God our church, we try to offer, you know, we able that we can serve you and worship God in several ways. But God never changes. He's never taken by surprise. He's never caught off guard. So, my question was, are we really trusting Him? The Bible refers to the Lord several times in Scripture as a rock. Or, you know, Peter. Jesus was speaking to Peter. He said, on this what? Rock. I will build what? My church. On this rock. The revelation that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Amen. Because without Him, we, we're, we're lost and without any hope. It doesn't matter... You know, I always say Jesus is able to save from the uttermost to the guttermost. It doesn't matter. He has no respect for a person. So, without Jesus and Him dying on the cross for our sin, we would have nothing anyway. But because of Jesus, we are somebody. Not in ourselves, but we are children of the Most High God. Let's say it together. We are children of the Most High God. I mean, the Most High God that put the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore that split the Red Sea, that's our dad. Can I get a good amen on that? That's our father. And sometimes we catch ourselves, it's real easy to start stressing about things and trying to figure everything out in life. 
We, like I said, on Sundays we're laying a foundation. But Jesus is referred to, and, and the Lord is referred to as a rock or an anchor. One scripture talks about He is the anchor of our soul. Jesus is our rock. He is solid. Can I get a good amen? Amen. amen. What do you think of when you think about solid? It could be a lot of things, but I think of uh, used to. I had a bunch of old bucket bulls, and and there would any time I'd have a young bull. One of the hardest things to do is to get that bull ready to go to town. And what I mean by that, those bulls, they're, they're bred up, they're bred to buck, and they're basically they're crazy as a road lizard. How many of you know what a road lizard is? <laughs> How many of you ever seen a road lizard go down the road? They're nothing in the dark. My sister is so funny. She's got a little touch of dementia, but she is so funny. Sometimes, just a few months ago, she'd come to church with us, and I was talking to her on the phone the other day, and I was messing with her, you know, I'm always joking around, trying to have a, a laugh and cut up a little bit. And so she calls me and she says, how are you doing, my little brother? I said, I'm good. She said, how about sister-in-law? And I said, oh, she's good. We talked to her a minute and I was messing with her about something, you know, and she said, boy, she said, you are crazy as a road lizard. <laughs> and so I said, we was laughing and she said, have you ever seen a road lizard? I said, oh, I have. She said, that road lizard will run down there and duck the dark and go this way and that way and then run off in the ditch, you know. She was, at 80 years old, she's explained to me what a road lizard is. <laughs> and, and, and we get all these things going on in life, and, and we may be dust and dark, but the Lord never changes. Amen. It's pretty cool to know that the, our Heavenly Father created this world. He knows how many hairs are on our head. He created us in our mother's womb. He gave us a fingerprint like none other. And that's our, that's our heavenly Father. Amen. He's going to take care of it. Can I get a good amen? amen. amen. Jesus even said, Let not your heart be troubled in my, father, in my Father's house and many mansions. If it had not been so, I would have told you so. And I go in John 14 to prepare a place for you. Amen. So our, our hope just isn't in this world. Can I get a good amen? amen. Just like the song earlier, life. James says life is a bank. Yep. How many in this room are 45 and over? Raise your hand. We did this earlier. <laughs> How many in this room remember that we're 45 and over? Remember when you were 25? Amen. And it doesn't seem that long ago, does it? <laughs> life does move along. And this, but when, when Jesus is the anchor of your soul, you know that we're really just passing through. Remember the old gospel songs? I'm just passing through. This world is not our home when it comes down to it. Amen. We're going to spend eternity one day in heaven. Amen. And the Bible says there's no more sorrow, no more pain, no more tears. Can I get a good amen? Amen. amen. My wife says she thinks that you can eat all the chocolate you want when you get to heaven. You won't bring any work. Okay. I got an amen from all the ladies. But you know, we don't know exactly what heaven's going to be like, but we know we will have a glorified body. And we won't face the things that we face on this earth. But in the meanwhile, Jesus said, let not your heart be what? Trouble. And I'm piggybacking from Sunday. We're going to carry on next week, or, or Sunday, this coming Sunday. Let not your heart be troubled, but the Lord is our rock. He is our solid anchor. When I think about the bucking bull, I mean, I say he's crazy as a road lizard. They are. They're wild. And the hardest thing to get that young bucking bull to do is to calm down. They're, they're afraid of everything. They, wanna, they, they will run over you and hook you and hurt you, but their first choice is to get away from you. So when you got them in a pen and you take them to town and there's the covered arenas and big fans, and they've never seen any of this, and there's music going on, so those bulls, the hardest thing to do for that bull is to get them to chill out and calm down and do what they were created to do, which is buck. So sometimes at home, when I was really training those bulls and competing with them, man, I'd get a bull and he would buck so hard at home. But the question was, can he go to town? Can he take the diesel smoke? Can he get the trailer? Haul him to another state? Can he stand in a stall all night with the lights on and music playing and fans in the top of the covered arena? Some of them, they just spazzed out and they wouldn't buck 30% of their potential 
And they were wired out. So the hardest part was to get those bulls where you could haul them. And then there was always a few old bucket bulls that I'd keep around the house for young guys to get on. That they were what we would call, he is just a solid old bull. You can haul him to Washington State, and he's going to turn back to the left right there every time. Do the same thing. You can buck him out in, the, in my pen in the front yard, and he's going to do the same thing. Amen. Amen. So we want to be solid. As a Christian, I don't want to be, you know, like the little road lizard, darting all over the place. I want to be solid in my walk. I want to be rooted and grounded. In order for me to do that, I have to trust Him. Now, Proverbs chapter 3. I was tied up there for a little bit tonight, and I wasn't able to get these verses to Miss Cheryl, but Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. Most of you can probably quote that. That's a very popular scripture. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. When I speak of trust, I say, are we really trusting Him? This is not going to be a scripture you've never heard in your life, probably. Maybe it is. It's a powerful scripture. Proverbs 3, verse 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not what? Depend. Depend on what? Your own understanding. In other words, quit trying to figure everything out. Some things you just got to trust. I mean, I don't like the times we're in right now. And I'm like, Lord, could you fix this within the next 10 minutes? <laughs> yeah. Hey, he, he's going to get us through this time. He knows what he's doing. He can handle this. We just have to simply trust him. And walk with him. Be wise. Ask him for wisdom. It says, trust the Lord in all your heart. Don't depend on your own what? Understand. In verse 6, seek his will in all you do. Man, that's, that's a challenge sometimes. Sometimes we want God to do our will. We ever, anybody ever <clears throat> pray, pray a prayer like that? Anybody bold enough to admit it by raising your hand? <laughs> it's funny now because we've walked that road. We've learned a lesson, hopefully. God, you know, this is what I want you to do. It. Uh, go ahead and do it by this time. This is how I want it all to work out. But he says, seek his will in all you do. And he will what? Show, Show you which path to take. So a lot of our stress many times is for naught. It's literally a waste of time. So we're my question is, do we trust Him? And all the way we know if we trust Him is when we go through some challenging, uncomfortable times. It's a lot of fun when everything's comfortable in our life. I mean, I like it, don't you? Yeah. But sometimes when things are uncomfortable, obviously they're exactly that. They're uncomfortable. But during that time... It's a good time. I, I look back in my life and think, man, God had a plan for my life. I was talking to a friend this morning, you know, and he said, you know, had you not taken the journey you did, I would have recommended it for everybody. But had I not taken that journey, I wouldn't be where I am today. Amen. And I didn't enjoy parts of my journey in life. And it wasn't easy. If you've lived over a couple of years, you could agree with that too, right? I mean, not everything is... But... If you keep your eyes on Jesus, the Bible says He is the author, the author and the finisher of our what? Faith. So in other words, it's going to be okay. Let's say it together. It's all going to be okay. No matter what it is, what you're going through, you know, personally or, or family-wise, you may be going through a crisis in your life. It could be a health crisis. I mean, I talk to people every day. And somebody always says, hey, pray for me. I, I, this is what I'm going through. And then I may see somebody two hours later and say, hey, pray for me if you don't mind. This is what I'm going through. Two totally opposite things. And so, two years from now, if you meet the same two people again, they're going to have prayer requests. They're going to probably be totally different. This is a daily walk. Can I get a good amen? amen. The other day, uh, I was at Nacogdoches a couple of nights ago. Uh, went to run a few steers. My son was there and my grandson. So I wanted to go over and see them and talking to a couple of guys they knew me I didn't know them I mean I recognized them it's been a while and uh, I said man I'd like to give y'all something for letting my son and grandson rope and let me come out here and hang out with y'all you know let me help you with a light bill or something and they knew exactly who I was 
They look at me right now and say, we don't want anything from you. Just remember us in your prayers. And I thought, man, that's a pretty cool request. Yeah. It's a blessing that they knew. They knew who I was better. They said, we know who you are. We see you sometimes on Facebook. <laughs> I better act right, amen. But to them, they didn't want anything from me. They literally was seriously said, just remember us in your prayers. And I think, man, what a compliment that they would trust me to pray for them. And I don't take that lightly. I don't want to drive off and never pray for them. Man, before I leave, I'm like, Lord, bless these guys. Amen. They, they bless me. They bless my family. I ask you to watch over them and bless them. And, and so I told them, man, if you ever anything I can do for you, let me know. He said, we don't need anything. Just remember some your prayers. And that might seem little, but that's not little. Amen. Amen. That those people trust me, and they're not. Those guys aren't like you and I. They're not perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Slowly start laughing. None of us are perfect. Okay. It blesses me so much that people that aren't always just a regular church goer. I love to be. I love that people like that feel accessible to me. Because I'm no better than they are. None of us. Nobody in here is perfect. We've all sinned and fall short. But to me, that opportunity, they didn't want anything. They said, hey, remember us in your prayers. I thought, man, that's pretty cool. So trust in the Lord with all your heart and eye on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He will what? He'll show you which path to take or He will direct your path. Say this with me. The Lord... Is directing my path. So my question is, are we pulling back like an old... How many of you have ever seen a show steer when you try to lead it the first time? It's an ugly sight. Yeah. They back up and pull and you got to try them to a tractor, tie them to a donkey. Everybody has different theories. But it, it's not easy. Or a horse, the first time you try to lead a horse, that horse is backing up and pulling on you. So I want to make sure we're not balking, right? When God's leading me, I don't want to be two elevens. I don't want to be skidding on my heels. I don't want two skid marks. Can I get a good amen? amen. I want to follow Him. I'll tell y'all something funny. Speaking of two skid marks, when I was a young kid getting on some bulls, there was an older guy there. He was a little rough around the edges. How many of you know what that means? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was scared. I was getting on like my third bull. I was nervous. And this old guy... Hit, his name was Double O. If that tells you anything, it's called him Double O. Double O. <laughs> I don't know how he got that name. But old Double O, he was getting on a bull. They was talking to him. And he said, yeah, he said, last weekend it was a bad deal. And I was listening over here and I was like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> Do I need to hear this story right before I ride a bull? He said, it was bad. He said, I got on a big brandle last weekend. He said, he was so big. His horn was so big. Looked like alfalfa was hanging off his horn. He said, he was looking for somebody to, to, to haul and to hook. You know, give you a hook. The bull gives you a hook and it's not good. And so he said, man, that bull rung me out so bad that night. He said, when they, when they drug me out of the arena, said, somebody got me under each arm and it was just two spur marks where my heels slid out. I thought, oh, man. I don't need to hear that right before I'm going to do it. But I don't want, when God is working with me and taking me through a difficult time, I don't want skid marks. I want to be walking with Him and following His lead. Can I get a good amen? amen. I don't want to put my heels in the ground. I know sometimes, <clears throat> last Sunday, my daughter has a, a little two-year-old horse that hasn't been messed with much. So when everybody came over, she saddled him up. He's gentle. And put a drive line on him. You take, put an O-ring snaffle in. Put a line on each side. And you go through the stirrups. And you kind of get way back here behind him. And you kind of get him kind of feeling how to, how to bend around and stuff. And so he, he was kind of lazy. And he just didn't want to move. So she was popping them lines. And he was just looking back at her. And I think, man, that's like us sometimes. God's kind of bumping us a little bit. And we just... Look at it, you know. <laughs> Look at that old horse is doing so. I got my, my daughter boss said, grab that flag. I have a, a, a little stick and it's got an orange flag. And when you do like that, it goes, <laughs> makes a lot of noise. And that flag shakes around. Have you ever seen a flag? 
So my daughter-in-law takes that flag behind that horse, and boy, it scared it. It woke him up. <laughs> he took off. He moved on out a little bit. And sometimes things in our life may not, we may not understand them. Sometimes this can get us on track. Get us thinking outside the box. How many of you are like, Lord, in my life, I should be untracked by now then. I've been, I've been sacked out before. I've, been, I've had the old flag shook at me. But our question is, do we truly trust? In Matthew chapter 11, we're, we're out of time, but I read this Sunday, but I'm going to bring a little something out here. Jesus said, come to me, all you who are what? Everything. Weary and what? carry heavy burdens. That disqualified everybody in the room, right? <laughs> All you are weary, carry heavy burdens, and I will give you what? Rest. That's the key. Jesus wants us to have rest in our soul. Doesn't matter what's going on around us. I mean, I can't even preach any better than I did Sunday when we see Jesus asleep on the pillow in the bottom of the boat. What did the disciples say, remember Sunday? Ah, oh, you left us out in the drown. Hey there, how dare you, Lord? We've done that before, right? Yeah. What are you doing for me, Lord? And sometimes we just got to get back and trust Him. It's not easy. Yeah. <laughs> get a good, how many of you don't make good passenger uh, seat riders with the certain drivers? <laughs> how many of y'all start stomping the gas and brakes and you're on the passenger side? <laughs> a little bit of a control freak there, Frank. Lord bless you. <laughs> but you know, that... <laughs> <laughs> the song Jesus take the wheel <laughs> we, we see, we're like yeah we want Jesus to take the wheel but we don't want that person to take the wheel <laughs> I'm a little nervous here but the, the thing is when the Lord is driving you, you gotta you gotta sit back and you gotta trust now, I wish that was just a one two three step and it's easy within 30 seconds it is a process Where's my rest? Where's my peace? Am I trusting Him? Jesus said, Come to me, all you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I'll give you what? Rest. 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 So I've got to learn to walk in the rest of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Even though I don't know what's going on around me, and there may be storms, I can still trust Him. He said, Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest in your soul. For my yoke is easy to bear. And my and the burden I give you is what? Light. So his yoke is easy to bear. Amen? Amen. And so my question is, will we yoke up? How many of you know what that means? If you've ever seen some driving horses, I put a yoke on. Hey, we're out of time. But I challenge you. Every day is a learning process. Where's our rest? Where's our peace? And am I really trusting you? Can I get a good amen? amen. You gotta trust. There's different phases in your life, different stages. No. They're gonna be a little different. The scenery's gonna be different. But you can trust the Lord. Maybe we can't trust everybody. How many of you live long enough you can't to realize you can't trust everybody? Amen. But you can always trust the Lord. Can I get a good amen? amen. Father, we thank you for tonight. May we leave here and be doers, not just to hear all the Thank you that we can trust you, Lord. And uh, we ask you to lead, guide, and direct us. And Lord, may we be that seasoned, solid Christian as we begin our journey and growth in you. In Jesus' name. Everybody say it? Amen. 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 Y'all have a blessed week. And we will be here Sunday morning, 1030. Looking forward to it. That's right, Chick. That's right, Chick. Right. Oh my, my dad! It's cheese, my dad!